War never changes. 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 You look out at this wasteland, looks like chaos. I just could not look away. is probably one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. I got this thing here for a reason. Oh yes, as everyone is aware, Amazon has recently released the Fallout live action TV show, and it has been met with general praise all around. There's a lot of different ways that the Fallout TV show could have been made, but I think the way that they did it is precisely the route it should have been taken. Whoever was part of the writing staff, give them a raise. Give them as much money as they're asking for. You want to have sex? You mean use my cock? Yeah. Maybe not as much, but all around, the production of this show is just everything a fan of the series could want and everything that people who aren't fans of the series need in order to be introduced. This is a great representation of the Fallout universe. It's a story about moral dilemmas, the juxtaposition between a tightly knit community of order buried beneath a world where all rules have gone out the window. The story mainly revolves around Lucy, a vault dweller who ventures out of her vault and into the surface world. She is the complete opposite of everything she comes across at the beginning of the show. And the same theme keeps popping up over and over again. The same question keeps getting asked. Will you still want the same things that you wanted when you started? Will you still be clean by the end of it? The show is asking the right questions. And even better, it doesn't give any satisfying answers. It leaves it up to you to think through and figure out for yourself. Imagine making a piece of media that actually makes you think and consider about the things and topics that are being discussed within it. But nestled within this land of lawlessness are other competing factions that have their own personal moral compasses. It's the standard fallout formula, you know, Enclave, Brotherhood of Steel, NCR, there's all these different competing factions that want to decide how best to rule over the remnants of the world. But where the show really shines is in the comparisons of all of these ethical differences there is such a vast array of characters from all different diverse backgrounds and the show brings them all together and makes all their different competing worlds collide and clash and it really creates almost like a debate atmosphere like you are in the audience of a debate going on on screen and you you're forced to decide who is morally correct in this situation is it this person or is it this person and the answer is not always obvious there is some some striking contrast in the way that their competing ethics collide. The show portrays this aspect so well that it actually makes you feel empathy for what should be the obvious antagonist in any other regular show. And that applies to big roles and small roles in the show as well. For instance, early on in the show there's like an old lady shopkeeper in a rundown little settlement town city and she scolds Lucy after she finds out that she's an actual vault dweller and she refuses to do business with her because of her being a vault dweller. In the moment you kind of hate the lady for you know presenting this obstacle to the main character but then you listen to her lecture and she goes on about how the vaults are little more than just bunkers for the rich to hide in while the rest of the world burns on the surface and so they turn a character who is easy to hate easy to not want anything to do with easy to want to get rid of and they give you a mode of sympathy for her and think maybe she has a really good point this lady is a bitch by all accounts and the way that she mocks and scolds lucy <laughs> is a frustrating thing to sit through. But by the end of her spiel against the vaults and Lucy, the audience is forced to reckon with the fact that the lady is pretty correct. Maybe all the vault dwellers are just entitled. Maybe those on the surface have a right to abandon the vault dwellers, just like the vaults abandoned them and left them to wither on the surface. Maybe the rest of the world is just jealous of their access to clean water and is taking out their anger on the first real representative of that faction that they've ever seen in their lives. And make no mistake, the vaults themselves are a 
faction in this world, in Fallout in general. They're no different than the Brotherhood of Steel. They're no different than the NCR. They're just hidden away from sight. But this show is a great introduction for anyone who has never played the games. It gives plenty of information to allow them to become relatively familiar with the world and the scene and the background that this franchise was born into. And it even drops a good amount of Easter eggs for people who have played the games and are fans of the series. It's a good service between catering to a broad audience and offering a bit of fan service for the people who have been here for a long time. But it's not so much fan service that it's nauseating or obnoxious or in your face, you know? And there are loads of people who are complaining, Man, this show is nothing but just a bunch of references to the games. And this is just such a thoughtless knee-jerk reaction to watching the TV show. I mean, what does this even mean? That the show faithfully sticks to the source material without deviating from the formula that made the game successful in the first place? What is the argument here? This Fallout show sucks because it reminds me too much of Fallout. Wow, what a horrible crime. Imagine adapting a game into a live action TV show and actually trying to appeal to the core audience of that game. It's unacceptable. 12 years dungeon. All of you, dungeon, seven years, no trials. I mean, this isn't a situation like Arcane, where the only gameplay that the writers can make reference to are a few champion abilities and some ultimate attacks. There is a lot of material to work with in the Fallout universe, and the writers were just having fun with it. They were familiar with the source material, and they were enjoying, it seemed like, putting this stuff into the shows, and they worked it in a very natural way. And if your number one complaint is really just that the show is just a bunch of references that, to the video games, then that kind of tells me that you didn't really actually watch the whole show, and you might have just tuned out after episode three because the show reminded you of Fallout. It just, it doesn't make sense. How can people complain about a video game show being full of references to the video game? Maybe if the writing was empty and worthless and wasn't an interesting story, then yes, that argument would hold so much more water. But as it stands, I've completed the show and I can tell you without a doubt, I am so excited to see where the show goes next but anyway the opening scene is haunting it is the stuff of nightmares and it is perfect for the fallout franchise okay we all know what happens at the beginning of any fallout anything we all know where it starts the show sets the perfect tone back in that suburban utopian 1950s post world war ii america that kind of just perpetuated forever it's the idyllic paradise and then it's all immediately torn down as soon as we see it although it doesn't happen immediately in the show they actually went about this in a really clever way to hook people in we all know that the nukes are gonna drop and they're gonna cause chaos but the show takes its time to get to that point. It almost drags it out. But this dragging it out is very strategic and well done. It builds up anticipation. It tenses the audience. It makes you wish you could just rip the band-aid off and get it over with. Because you know that what's happening is about to be horrible for everybody in that scene. But it also creates this emotional payoff when it finally does happen and the bombs finally do fall. The tensions build for so long and then the bombs fall and they release. But after they release, you realize you're jerked back into the reality that you're witnessing a very plausible universe, something that could actually happen today. And when you think about it in that perspective, it's pretty haunting. I mean, I couldn't help but just imagine the experience from Cooper Howard's perspective, standing there with his daughter being horrified at what I'm witnessing. That is an intense emotional experience if you're willing to put yourself in that position. It is a chilling thing when you really sit down and think about it. And it really was the perfect way to set the stage for the show and what comes next in the preceding episodes all the way up until the end. But the only thing it was missing was that silky smooth Ron Perlman voice to accompany the falling of those bombs. When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. But we'll chalk it up to a missed opportunity and leave it at that. So there are three main characters that are introduced in the first episode, and all of them are very unique from their own backgrounds, and the way that the show goes about introducing them is just entertaining in general. So there's Lucy, Maximus, and the Ghoul, the Vault Dweller, the Brotherhood of Steel Aspirant, 
and the one who's been there since the beginning. Lucy seems to be the main star of the show, and from what I've seen, and from what I think, she is a total badass. And it's even more entertaining because she is this naive little girl in an unknown world, and she thinks the world is going to be as polite as she is, and she's just in for a completely rude awakening. And it's just super interesting to see her character in this environment and the way it affects her and the way she affects the environment. This is how you make a strong female character. Take notes, Captain Marvel. Take notes, Ray Palpatine. I'm not calling you Ray Skywalker. I'm just not. You lied. You lied at the end of the series. You lied. You looked that woman in the eyes and you lied to her. Who are you, Ray Skywalker? You liar! There were so many moments in the show where I was actually afraid for Lucy's life. And that's what makes it entertaining. She's not just some overpowered, super female queen who can defeat anyone no matter what because she's better than them. There are actually stakes for her. There's actually threats for her. There's actually good storytelling and conflict that comes into play. This is what a good role model for little girls looks like on screen. You know, if it wasn't for the blood and the gore and just just the, the horrible things that happen in this show. I would say Lucy is a pretty good role model for any child. But as I said, the main plot revolves around Lucy leaving the vault and she is in search of her dad. Okay, this doesn't count as a spoiler. It happens in the first episode. And by the way, Lucy's dad is played by the mayor of Portlandia. So that's pretty cool. Do you see what it's printing? Wait, and it's not even printing anything out, just an error message. Yes, I thought it was just getting itself ready to print. For 10 years? Yes, learning the code. Anyway, does that remind you of anything? Any fan service there? Yeah, they actually did a really good job with fan service. And remember how I said it wasn't nauseating or in your face? Yeah, again, they did a really good job with fan service. The main plot of this TV show harkens back to the main plot of Fallout 3. They're different in a lot of aspects, but it's still a clever nod back to that game. And there's another clever nod about halfway through the show back to another early Fallout game that I thought was interesting. It didn't really go anywhere, so that might be why some people complain about, you know, the show being nothing more than references. It did kind of feel like a cheap reference, but I'm guessing this is going to have a season two, and I can almost guarantee that the reference they made is going to come back up because it is not an insignificant reference. I don't want to spoil anything that doesn't happen past the first episode, but the show does an amazing job of explaining the lore explaining the backstory you know there's flashbacks and they the cinematography for these is amazing because there's flashbacks from before the war happening in parallel with events that are going on in the wasteland and it's just an amazing way to go about the storytelling and it's just so much fun it is a really great way to appeal to a broad audience i am going to say it right now amazon bethesda they did an absolutely phenomenal job making this show and they really Really knew what they were doing and I have so much respect for the writers for the cast of characters I mean Ella Purnell was asked point blank in an interview was playing the game to get ready for the show a waste of time you were more into the game than him Jonah himself he played a lot of it He's, yeah was that a game. complete waste of time what did that feel like you no. were kind of prepping for the it show wasn't a waste of time at all F you Hollywood reporter who the f are you what kind of a dog brain dead question is that you are a f on this society and you are so there is something wrong with your little that you think that is a good question to ask you're asking if an actress was wasting her time familiarizing herself with the source material she was about to make a tv show on what kind of brain dead world do you live in where you think that is an acceptable question to ask somebody who considers themselves a professional? But anyway, this TV show is how you introduce a franchise to an audience of people who might have never heard of it. <coughs> John Halo. Something else that I thought was really fun was that Bethesda recently announced the special stats of the characters in the show. So this is a really nice thing to do to connect with the fans of your games too. Because now you can kind of recreate the characters in whatever game you want to play, you know, Fallout 3, 4, 
New Vegas, and you can outfit these characters and fit them with the equipment and the stats of the characters in the show. So now I know there's going to be a bunch of challenges on YouTube and playthroughs about people, oh, can I beat Fallout playing as Lucy or playing as the ghoul? It's going to be really fun to see, and I am so excited. I am so excited for the next season of the show. I'm so excited to see where they take it because, again, I think the storytellers and the writers who are in that room in Amazon, they have amazing talent, and they really hired the right people for this because not only are they good at their job but they are respectful of the source material it's just refreshing to see especially in the wake of um, other live action adaptation tv shows no! on top of it i even think this could be a great opportunity for bethesda this could be a great little addition to whatever games they come out with whether it's dlc or just a mainline game this is something they could take the tv show and adapt it back into a game because it's different than the games itself and it still is very viable to work into the canon so just for the future of fallout this is i haven't said this since like 2018 or 19 i am very 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 excited for the future of fallout and for once i'm actually happy that this thing is hanging on my wall and this little guy is sitting right down here in the corner and that my profile picture is vault boy doing one of these because this game is really one that i hold dear to my heart this is one of my favorite games this is one of the first rpgs i ever played it's been one of my favorites for basically my entire life since playing it. if you haven't seen the fallout tv show i would highly recommend it whether you're a fan of the series or not great for anyone unless you don't like gore <laughs> and then it might, not be, might not be the best thing for you to Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe if you made it this far and you enjoy what I put out. I got more videos to check out if you got the time, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, y'all.